Hello guys, I'm going to be looking at a video by ASAP Science which talks about veganism and how great it is, apparently. Veganism has exploded in popularity across the world. For some, it's out of sympathy for animals, but increasingly, many are swapping diets due to the environmental and health claims. But are these claims... I think a lot of those claims are a load of BS if you ask me. Claims even accurate? Like, does going vegan actually make a noticeable difference on the planet, or are those impacts over exaggerated? And is it even healthy at all? Or is the lack. Notice the dark eye circles that are apparent amongst most people in the vegan population. Not to be offensive and rude and abrupt, but it is quite common. Probably not the most helpful thing to kind of see. I don't know of animal proteins and nutrients actually detrimental to your body. While a lot of claims have been made over the years, our access to good quality studies has only really just started to become accessible. So let's dive in. First up is- I doubt there's any good quality studies, if you ask me. There's not many at all, really. There's probably a handful that are quite useful. Some mechanistic stuff, but a lot of it's just reductionist, uh, propagandist nonsense with extreme conflicts of interest which we'll see, I'm sure, in this video. Going vegan better for the environment. This is the easy part of the video because the answer is super simple, yes. Point blank, yes. Avoiding meat and dairy products has a major impact on the environment. Study after... All right, let's take a look about a study quickly. All right, the global impacts of food production. Okay, it doesn't say much about the quality of the studies. It's just an article title. Um, you'd have to read for it to really understand it properly. An abstract, an article title, and some authors' names is not a good way to cite or way to sort of present a piece of information. Um, looking for it, I'm pretty sure it isn't like for like when comparing animal foods versus plant-based foods. I'm pretty certain of that. It's going to not include transportation, other such things. So. That one's automatically dismissed. Um, we can't tell anything from actually going through it. After Next one. Uh, duh, 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 duh. See, one with this study, you have to prove that greenhouse gas emissions are causal in terms of um, being negative to the, the earth. Are they? What, what, what ones? Which ones are they? Uh, they also have to prove that animals cause this much problem. Uh, now, I'm sure anyone that's been to perhaps, I don't know, LA, anywhere in the world where they grow av avocados and almonds, they'll know it takes thousands of litres just to make a few almonds and things like that. So, you know, that's just one food. Avocados, the other one I mentioned. All these other foods take an enormous amount of resources to create them. Whereas if you have a cow in a field, they have the grass, which grows itself, funny enough. You also have water, which comes from, I don't know, the clouds from the sky. So, yeah, I don't believe this for one second. And I think the quality of study is very poor. And again, they cannot prove these emissions are deleterious to the earth. Study after study has found that... Um, another study which tells you about climate change, resource depletion. How are you going to prove this? I mean, this has how many people in it? It doesn't even say. But yeah, say it had a thousand people in it. Okay, how are you going to get all these people to lock, lock themselves in a lab and say, okay, this is a diet I did follow. Then it's also a survey probably reporting what they said they ate, which we know about 40% of the food that we take in, we do not account for, which is bizarre because I think most people should know what they eat. Um, but that's the truth. That's the way human beings are. We're not very accurate with our recording or logging. Um, what else is there to read through? This, there we go. This result clearly supports the concept that meat and dairy concept plays a critical role above all. It does supports the concept, so it's an idea, it's a theory, it's not proven. It doesn't show anything. So again, the study is not causal, does not point any fingers towards any particular um, contributor to um, this climate change, apparently. A vegan diet as compared to a full-on meat-eating or omnivorous diet, or even a vegetarian diet, uses less land, conserves more water, and produces less greenhouse gases. But I haven't found that at all in the studies I've read. I've found the complete opposite. 
What's this guy reading? About 70 to 80% compared to omnivorous diets. And that's a huge difference. Now that's not to say every vegan food is created equal. We have an entire video breaking down which alternative milk is the best for the environment. And even there you can see that something like almond milk takes a lot more water to create than other alternatives. Exactly what I just said about almonds. But on the whole, transitioning to a vegan or even vegetarian diet will significantly decrease your personal impact on the planet. Of course, simply re What about all the medications that you have to take and all the vitamin mineral supplements you have to take because you're deficient in like 15 nutrients? What are you gonna do then? Do they cost the planet? Probably yes. Is that accounted for in the studies? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Reducing your meat and dairy consumption can also make a difference so it doesn't have to be so black and white. But full stop, a vegan diet is better for the environment and the future of our planet. You haven't proven that. You've just made claims, put some studies on the screen which aren't really well documented, don't really suggest much outside of there might be some link here, but I've read studies which are contrary to that. Do I want to put them on the screen now and spend all this time digging them up? No. The onus of opportunity and um, evidence is on you to prove it. You're the one in the minority with the opposing view. I think that most people don't believe that a diet which has foods coming from all over the planet to pr produce, to, to provide to some population of people is going to be optimal for the, the earth or the apparent climate. Think about that. All right, on to the more complicated subject of diet. Interestingly, some of the first athletes on a strict plant-based diet were the gladiators. All fighters' diets contained large amounts of legumes, pulses, and grains, and contained little to no animal protein. But it's only recently that research has delved into the question of whether or not a vegan diet can not only enhance athletic ability, but bolster overall health in the long term. One of the big... I've heard populations of people where they've been, you know, fighters, warriors, people within war, what's the word, infantry, whatever you want to call it, combat people, you know, what's the word, I, I don't know, whatever the word is for people that go to war and they fight people, I should know, I think I probably said it already, but the point is, a lot of them were eating animal-based diets, and this was dating back thousands of years, you just pinpointed one place where they happened to have apparently had this, that, and the other, okay, what proof do you have? questions that comes up a lot is did we evolve as vegetarians or meat eaters i mean we've got these sharp canine teeth that look just perfect for digging into flesh though large canines are not exclusive to carnivorous animals it's thought they likely evolved more for intimidation and competition among mates as am i intimidating absolutely not i look ridiculous um i don't think we evolved to to have canines so we could intimidate each other what a daft concept. Well, as defense rather than for eating meat. And if we look at the diets of modern primates, the ones we're closely related to, like chimps, orangutans, and gorillas, you'll see that most of them have totally plant-based diets. Most not all. If you have a, a, a primate in the wild, they'll eat, yeah, a lot of fruit and vegetation if they can access any nutrition in it. But they will also eat each other, given the chance if they're hungry enough. So um, I think there is certainly an adaptive response that most animals have. Believe it or not, guys, most animals on this planet are actually carnivorous, funny enough. So think about that one. I love thinking about chimps being hipster vegans like, oh, you don't have any soy milk? Awkward. But seriously, if gorillas can get this jacked without the need for animal proteins, surely we're not meant to be eating meat. I mean, look at those muscles. We're different to primates. We've got a different biological system. Yeah, we look a bit like them. I mean, this guy's obviously got a lot more hair on his back and, um, well, probably, I don't know, bigger hands, stronger arms, juicier pecs, maybe, I don't know. Um, but his biology uh, outside of that doesn't really match mine, no. I don't have a, a very, 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 very long intestine. I don't have a giant stomach to absorb this food. I don't have um, a pea-sized brain or however small it is. So I'm, I'm quite different from a primate, I think, anyway. Muscles. Me throwing to our video on bestiality. Anyway, many suggest that because we branch off the same evolutionary tree as our primate contemporaries, surely we're also primarily vegetarian. We've also got bumpy colons, which sounds very sexy, whereas carnivorous animals typically have a smooth colon. But despite all these facts, the truth is there is no- We have to pinpoint what point in history that we start to develop a more bumpy colon. Is that because of the implementation of current plant-based agriculture, what I'd say dates back about 10,000 years. Is that an adaptation that had happened over that period of time? Did it happen before that? No one really knows. I think that's a mute point.
No denying that our species turned to eating meat regularly. In fact, scientists estimate that our ancestors started eating meat around 2 million years ago, long before Homo sapiens even existed. We've even found fossilized animal bones that were cut up for dinner that are around 2.5 million years old. It's theorized that somewhere along the way our environment changed. We weren't in a tropical forest anymore and didn't have access to as many plants that we could stomach. So we turned to meat to supplement that loss. And of course, there are many theories about how meat shaped the human brain. But for now, all we need to know is that while we do come from plant eaters, we have been eating meat for millions of years. As long as we've been human, we've been eating meat. So then, can we survive with... So what's the point? Out meat at all. Some people might tell you that you simply can't get enough protein without meat, but that's really not true. You could get tons of protein from whole grains, nuts, and beans, and for most people, this is more than enough. In fact, most. Yeah, but it's not about more, it's about quality. Um, I've had this debate thousands of times, well, not thousands, but not heaps of times, handful of times where I've said, you know, what is the DIAAS score of a given protein? Plant based? Not very high. Most research finds protein deficiency extremely rare, except in people who are simply not eating enough calories. But what research has found is missing from a vegan diet is B12. Vitamin B12 is required by animals for a whole host of biological pathways and for normal functioning. And the thing is, you cannot get B12 from any vegetables. There's zero B12 in a salad. You can find it in beef, pork, poultry, fish, eggs, etc. And studies find that B12 deficiencies are a big problem for a lot of vegans and vegetarians. When your levels are low, it can impact brain functioning, energy, and mood. And at worst, it can cause full-on hallucinations. I mean, if that's what you're going for, maybe just try some psilocybin instead. Me throwing to our video on shrooms. So if you're only consuming fruits and vegetables, it'll likely become a problem. Luckily, supplements are a thing. You can literally just take B12 pills and then you never have to worry about this. The same can be- You can take a lot of pills, but the cofactors that come with them, which are in meat and animal produce, don't really come in these pills, funnily enough. Go to your local shop, buy a, a vegan or vegetarian, plant-based, what have you, B12 supplement with cofactors in it. It'll be like, I don't know, it won't be retinol, it'll be like beta carotene. It'll be always a plant-based plant form, which is pretty much useless to the whole, the whole human body. So yeah, that's one of the problems with supplementing. Yeah, you might get your blood levels high, but it just masks a problem. The body doesn't have 15 plus nutrients can be said for other nutrient deficiencies that tend to pop up for vegans, like iron or omega-3s. There's even a ton of foods that are fortified with these to make vegan diets less of a risk. Yeah, they're fortified, but again with plant-based forms, not animal forms. But another area that brings up some concern is bone strength. If you grew up in the 90s and early 2000s, then you're more than aware of the many campaigns touting the health benefits of milk. Calcium is an essential part of the human diet because it helps your muscles and nerves function properly and keeps your bones good and strong. And when you don't have enough in your diet, your body actually ends up pulling it from your bones, which can potentially make your bones more likely to break. Hence, cow's milk, which naturally contains calcium and is absorbed easily into the body, is often promoted for good, strong bones. And a research study from 2020 backed this up when it found that vegans have a much higher risk of breaking their bones than meat eaters. This was a study that followed around 2,000 vegans and compared them to non-vegans over the course of a few decades, and their risk of bone breaks was basically twice as likely. But here's the weird part. When we look at countries that simply don't drink as much milk as a whole, this pattern doesn't hold. For example, in West Africa, consumption of dairy isn't that common, and yet they have extremely low rates of osteoporosis. This can be explained by the role of epigenetics, how a polymorphism within our genetic structures can impact the necessity that we have for certain nutrients. Our body will, in some cases, flush some away if we don't need that much. It's all about evolution, guys, you know. That's why, for example, 80% of the black population of the world approximately cannot tolerate dairy. Well, no wonder why, you know, they're adapted to do well without it. Us in the Northern Hemisphere, um, particularly like my sort of area of the world, Scandinavian sort of countries, um, England, yeah, we probably had a lot of dairy, more pastoral genetics, which does make sense. So again, another null point. 
costs like a fraction of a percent. And a study that compared 40 countries' consumption of dairy also found that those who had little milk were not any more likely to break their hips. Even studies within the same country have found confusing results. When comparing- The reason for that is guys as well, because if you think about Africa, they've got to do a lot more walking. They have to adapt at that time to walk long, longer, greater periods of time, you know, um, more land to cover. It kind of makes sense. Yeah, they're going to have some, some weight bearing activity on their body, which is probably strengthening their bones. It's a form of hormesis. So another, again, another null point. Comparing heavy milk drinkers to light milk drinkers, there's really not a clear link between bone strength and breakage. The truth is dairy isn't the only way to consume calcium. It's in lots of veggies like kale, bok choy, and broccoli, and there's even fortified foods like orange juice and cereal that contain it. <coughs> but for vegans, even when studies account for calcium in the problem is all of these foods have a lot of oxalate in them, which binds to calcium, which renders it absolutely useless to the body. Then it deposits calcium in your kidneys, which create kidney stones. Not ideal. Intake, those who were eating lots of calcium were still more likely to break bones. So perhaps there is another environmental or situational factor outside of diet that's playing a role here and is yet unknown. It's worth bringing up that most of this data is on adults and studies that do look at kids are much more clear cut. Kids that drink milk break fewer bones than those who don't. Finally, on the bad side, research has found that both vegans and vegetarians are at a higher risk for stroke. However, the overall risk is small, around three extra cases per 1,000 people over 10 years. And this particular study had many limitations, including quite a small sample so it's difficult to draw major conclusions from it so that's fair enough that's good analysis that study it might suggest something but maybe it doesn't who knows i'd speculate over a longer period of time perhaps 15 20 years that risk so to speak would actually go up so are there any specific health benefits to going vegan Definitely. A study on over 90,000 people found that vegans are less likely to develop high blood pressure, obesity, type 2 diabetes, some types of cancer, and are more likely to live longer. A vegan diet lowers cholesterol, and many of these foods- You wouldn't want to lower cholesterol. I don't see the point in that. There's no association between mortality and cholesterol levels. In fact, the people that have the highest cholesterol actually seem to live a bit longer, apparently, according to some associative studies, so no point foods contain a lot of antioxidant phytonutrients and nitrates versus some animal products which contain more pro-inflammatory fats i don't think there's any pro-inflammatory fats outside of the ones that your body absolutely needs to create inflammation to repair yourself from damage that your body can sometimes have you trip you fall you, you graze your knee well, yeah you need some inflammation there um i've seen people on vegan diets and carnivore diets where they've had seemingly low CRP levels, m marker of in inflammation. Um, I just think on the vegan diet, over a longer period of time, the damage would build up as the deficiencies begin to sequester themselves. These anti-inflammatory effects are believed to be the reason vegan diets seem to minimize some autoimmune diseases. In fact, Venus Williams, who suffers from Sjogren's syndromes, credits her vegan diet with minimizing the extreme fatigue associated with her condition. Some I think she's also quit that recently. I might be wrong. But every time these guys put up a, a vegan athlete, I look online, Google, da, 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 name of the athlete, vegan diet. They've quit the diet. They've quit the diet. You know, it's, it's like a news article. But um, yeah, I, I don't think these anecdotes really hold that much. Now, when I've spoken to about four or 500 people now on the carnivore diet, I can say, yeah, it's a pretty strong confirmation in my mind, at least, that there's something to it. Um, now, a lot of them are actually ex-vegans, funny enough. So you can draw your own conclusions from there. Um, in fact, let me know in the comment section below what you think about that. Studies have even found a vegan diet to be one of the healthiest, outperforming even pescatarian and vegetarian diets, likely because of its higher fruit, vegetable, and legume intake. There was up... Likely. It doesn't mean it's causal. It doesn't mean it proves anything. Um, the reality is someone that is vegan is probably quite extreme for the most part. Same with carnivores. We're pretty extreme people must admit, um, what I'd say about the people on the vegan diet is if they're vegan, they're probably getting rid of all the junk food as well, all the processed food, which is going to be, um, at least I think, bad for human health outcomes. Now, the problem is the deficiencies, which tend to overlap 
over a period of time, about five to ten years for a lot of people, that's why people will do the carnivore diet and feel fine. They will do it for like five, ten, fifteen years perhaps. I've had people doing it for as long as sixty years apparently. Um vegan diet, most of them four years maybe, maybe. That thing seems to be the tipping point where I mean I couldn't say the exact number, but something like eighty four or ninety percent of these people actually fall off the diet because of disastrous health outcomes. Up to a 32% lower risk among those with the highest intake of plant-based foods for cardiovascular disease, even after adjusting for age, sex, race, education. Adjusting. Why do you adjust it? your own data? That tells me it's not an actual study. It just says, oh, we've kind of made it up a bit just to see what happens. You know, it might prove our point that we want to make. So, and anytime someone says adjusted data, it's not causal. Approach with caution. Health behaviors, alcohol intake, and exercise. So yes, on average, the health of vegans does tend to be better. Of course, it's also possible that vegans are just generally more health conscious to begin with. Vegan health confirmation, yeah, that's a that's a bias. Um, anytime you study someone and they select to be healthier or what they believe is healthier, they're going to make more health conscious decisions. I understand that. So it is a confounding factor in this regard. Vegans do tend to smoke less, drink less alcohol, and exercise more. And whether it's something bad in meat and dairy or helpful in all the extra veggies is yet to be determined. Of course, it's worth pointing out that it's just as easy to be an unhealthy vegan with all the options for junk and processed food nowadays. So in no way does going vegan necessitate a health. So a point of context is so I used to manage the best vegan health food shop in the south of England. So I've obviously met hundreds, if not thousands of vegans. What I can honestly say is um, they do buy a lot of processed food and they'll walk in the shop, go to their local pasty shop or whatever, be like a vegan pasty of some sort. I'm like, that's not real food. I didn't really see them buying real food very often, funny enough. It's always like the packaged crisps with like kale and seaweed and stuff in it, you know. Um, so yeah, processed food is big amongst vegans, I must say must say um which is kind of contradicts what i said previously but now i think about it yeah a lot of processed food i'd actually i actually go back and think god if these people just got off the processed food it might actually be a bit better your diet automatically the biggest question remaining is can it make you a better athlete and a NERMI study following 8,000 runners from across Europe comparing meat eaters, vegans, and vegetarians is currently testing this idea of improved endurance. Because veganism may boost immunity and aid in recovery and rehabilitation from injury, a lot of athletes are keen to take advantage of these perks. How'd you get from people apparently having a twofold increase in bone fractures to having better recovery and rehabilitation? That doesn't make sense. That's completely contradictory. Works. Veggies like beetroot contain nitrates that aid in blood flow and oxygen transport through the body. But the problem right now... That's what you have blood vessels for, isn't it? ...now is simply the lack of good data. There is very little data to support these claims right now, so studies are ongoing. At the very least, it's been shown that a well-planned vegan diet does meet the nutritional requirements for endurance athletes. Well-planned, apparently. There's, there's obviously key terminology here, so does meet the nutritional requirements for vegan athletes requirements what about optimizing what about being better what about biohacking you know these people want to be healthier but why not just take it a step up and just follow a carnival diet which is in my opinion probably the ultimate biohack we can actually do i don't know in other words it's just as good at the very least as an omnivorous diet whether it's optimal is yet to be determined at the end of the day what can we conclude from the available research well on the one hand a vegan diet is unequivocally better for the environment and while it's a whole other conversation to talk about the responsibility of corporations and institutions versus individuals as an individual it is a simple step that you can take to minimize your impact if that matters to you when it comes to diet at worst there could be some setbacks to your health but those can typically be so you might have more longevity of the, the planet Earth, apparently, according to his sort of opinion. Um, but you might have some health setbacks. Well, obviously not. Why would you choose to live a less healthy life so the planet can live a bit longer? It doesn't make sense. We should all want to evolve and adapt and thrive. That's the point of being human. That's literally why we're here.
be mitigated through careful planning and supplementation, and at best, it may actually be better for your overall health and well-being if you put in the effort to do it with intention and health in mind. I hope this video has been eye-opening for those of you who are curious. I know there's a lot of concern around companies capitalizing on claims that may or may not be exaggerated. I think it's totally fair to be skeptical. The vegan market is estimated to hit 24 billion by 2026, so we all need to have our bullshit meters up. If you want to know more, we have an I'm not going to watch that video. It's linked there. Let's have a look through the comments, shall we? Just for a bit of fun. I've not checked this yet, so I don't have a clue what I can say. Probably a lot of confirmation bias. The hardest part of being a vegan is to get up at five in the morning and milk the almonds. Absolutely. I'm 60 years old now. Three years ago, I decided to go vegan for many reasons and welfare, environmental, personal health. My cholesterol was... So you've lowered your cholesterol, which was absolutely pointless. Okay, you've lost some weight, which is great news. Very pleased to see that. Um... More energy, less snapping. It's probably because you've lost weight because you're not eating as many foods. The carnivore diet does the same thing, and it's actually better for your health. Um, in India, a lot of people are vegetarian because of our culture. I was vegetarian since childhood, and when I turned vegan last year, I very clearly saw a positive change in my physical as well as my mental health. This is my anecdotal experience. The mental health improvement has been a big impact on my overall well-being. Probably lowered some information that he had in his brain, or she had in her brain, from just mitigating the Randall cycle activation somewhat. Um, a vegan diet is going to have pretty much, not entirely, but mostly carbohydrates, less cross inhibition with fat as an energy substrate. Therefore, it's not going to be as much of a blockade in the cell. So yeah, that does make sense short term, past four or five years, maybe not. Let's get to the next one. Good, great job. You accurately portrayed veganism and you solid, well-studied examples. Um, they were not solid, well-studied examples at all as I've outlined earlier in the video. I think let's see if there's an interesting one here. I tried to be vegetarian. It was awful. I was so tired and grumpy, even when accounting to adjusting to make sure I have enough nutrition. It's pretty clear. Clear pretty quickly my body was not having it. I don't need meat all the time, but I found my body needs both bread and white meat to supply what my body needs to function at its best. Probably just needs red meat, to be honest, but if you like white meat as well, fair enough. Um, yeah, some people just get devoid of nutrition very quickly. My brother, for example, he did a vegetarian diet for about four years, fell off, he wasn't interested in doing it anymore. Too hard to keep keep a hold of, too difficult to keep a handle on. Um, so he moved off it, now he's doing just fine, doing his omnivorous diet, fair enough. Um, but yeah, four years again, that seems to be the, the sort of cut off, four or five years. Finally, information that allows a viewer to make a decision, good information to apply with other information. Lots of people tend to prefer being told what to do rather than given the option to choose what to do. I think it, this sort of video had a more of a, a biased direction towards a, a plant-based diet or a vegan diet. So I wouldn't really agree with that. They've tried to contrast the opinions and facts that we apparently have, but they're not great examples, to be honest. This may explain why Nordic countries may suffer from osteoporosis due to lack of sun in the winter to do the vitamin D stuff. Well, maybe, yeah. That's why we've got paler skin. We can absorb a bit more. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, I think. So there we go, guys. I've critically analysed and fairly looked at a video about veganism, environmental impacts, um, health and exercise performance. Um, the score, zero points. So take from it what you will. Make your own informed decisions. Just think about some of the things I've said. And obviously I've left a lot on the table here. I didn't analyse every single point you made because I'll be here for about two or three hours. But from a glance, from a... A glancing perspective where I've never actually seen this video before, I can say it is not solid information. Thanks very much for watching. Remember to hit like, comment, and subscribe if you have not yet already. Build muscle and lose fat on the carnivore diet.